So hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to my art session or art portion for the Sketchbook Revival Summit. Welcome! Yay! I'm so excited to get started with you. So as I just um, discussed with um, Karen in the little introduction, a little interview, I would like to do a little quirky bird with you guys today. And I am all about um, allowing the creative process or the characters we create uh, allowing them to support our personal growth, our healing, and our uh, self-connection and self-awareness. And one of the many <laughs> exercises and activities I do is I like, uh, at times, um, to create characters that can support me be more self-accepting. So that's what my focus is going to be today. And the Quirky Bird was born actually a while back now, in 2013, and I have done several different versions of uh, this little character. Um, but he was born in uh, order to help us accept ourselves, our quirks and all. Often in life we go around sort of being quite self-judgmental, having issues with all our little flaws, and uh, can be quite harsh on ourselves, I find. So I know a lot of people who have a very strong inner critic that can you know, be quite brutal at times. So um, I have found the antidote to the inner critic, <laughs> and that is um, the quirky bird. And the quirky bird is here to say to you, hey, we can all be wonky and weird and have these little flaws, but we can still be loving and kind to ourselves and embrace our quirks and embrace our weird and embrace our, our wonkiness. So, um, and the way, by, the way we do that is by basically drawing a character that is wonky and uh, quirky, him or herself, and their, or their selves. And, um, and, and you can include symbols that, let's say if you are, I always give an example of, let's say if you are a, a Star Wars geek or something, you feel a bit embarrassed about that, and it's a, a flaw. I don't think it's a flaw, but you perceive it as a flaw. You might want to put a little symbolism of the a lightsaber on the tummy of the bird or something. Or let's say you just love wearing purple all the time and everyone's always like, why did you just wear purple all the time? I wear black all the time anyway. Well, you might want to therefore heavily include the color purple. Or you sing in the shower and you're not very good at it and um, some people tell you not to or whatever. You feel embarrassed about your singing voice. You might put a little musical symbol, musical uh, note on there. So these are small examples of how you may um, include or embrace your quirks and you can embody them in the bird but you don't have to do it that way simply drawing a quirky bird um, and meditating while you create on accepting your own flaws can be a very helpful thing to do okay so um, before we start I'll briefly talk to you about the supplies I used for this today so the, the paint that I've been using here uh, is a mix of watercolour and really if you're not um, someone who has a library of or an entire studio filled with a variety of um, different art supplies then what you the minimum you need basically is uh, a, a set of watercolour a watercolour paints um, I have a big one of Schmincke which is uh, is something you don't need that necessarily. You can also have smaller ones or different brands. I have other brands as well, but this is the one that I'll use fairly, probably a lot. Today, you can have other brands. I have, I also have Jane Davenport. I have Arte, Arteza. I have some Daniel Smith. I have some Windsor & Newton. Whatever you have on hand will be fine. And then uh, uh, watercolor wise, and if you don't have watercolor, you could also do this with inks and or Tombow markers. So I love Tombow markers. Anyway, these are Tombow markers. So that could also work, but I will be working with watercolors today. Then I'll also be working with uh, some Posca pens, black and, uh, black and white. So these are Posca pens. These are, oh, and then I've got a Liquitex, no, a Dale Rowney one here, but mostly I tend to use Posca pens, but really what you're looking for is a paint pen, paint marker. So these are, acry they have acrylics paint in them, really th thin paint. A white and a black one of any kind. So um, uh, Dale Rowney do them, I think Liquitex do them as well, and Posca do them. And then, uh, or if you don't have those, you can also use like a gel pen or some black, a black and white pen is what we're looking for. <clears throat> and even if you don't have a white pen, you can use, you can do this probably with paint, although it's a little bit fiddly, so the doodles. Then what else? Oh yeah, I have used a small amount of colored pencils here for shading. But again, if you don't have those, you can do that with your paints. That's the final thing. Oh, I think I used a little bit of watered down acrylics ink in this one which is something like this or you have acrylics ink from 
uh, they do them. Daily Rounder do them, Licks Text do them. These are quite cool as well for this type of work. But mostly I haven't used acrylics uh, much at all. I like to use uh, mostly watercolour paints, but it helps with if you feel like you want to intensify your colour a bit. The acrylics, um, acrylic inks are pretty good to like sort of intensify the colour of whatever. And I, I do want to work probably with the, this one today. Um, but again, if you don't have those, don't worry, just, just work with your watercolours and you could layer your watercolours up if you just wanted to intensify the colour. So here are a couple of examples of other Quirky Birds that I've made in the past. As you can see, I'm working on different colour schemes. There's another one here. This one is very colourful. You can also incorporate collage. Um, I have incorporated collage in this one. I don't think we'll do that today because we are uh, short for time. So, but it is a fun additional thing you can do, add in some collage pieces. And this one actually was also done with some paint, some acrylics paint. You can do these um, quicker bits with all sorts of materials, however way you feel comfortable, but today I will be using watercolor paints. So, and what I want to do is I want to basically create a very similar quicker bit to this one, uh, to, so that I can demonstrate them the same color scheme, because I'm just really enjoying the color scheme. So I'd like to do that potentially again, or maybe I'll do a slightly different color scheme, not sure yet. There's also a lovely color scheme, I think. So it's best to choose two colors that you want to work with and a darker color for shading. Um, okay, so now before we start painting, just a bit about the body shape and the head shape. So it's fairly, these quicker birds are fairly straightforward to draw. You can basically uh, create any shape you want. You can basically draw your birds in any shape you want because they are quirky and asymmetrical and not deliberately created to, to to look like a real realistic bird. But for me, in my case, I usually make a, a head in a kind of wonky circular, sort of flat circular kind of way. You can also maybe do one of those, but the point is that you don't make a Merv perfect. <laughs> That's why they're quirky. So don't make, make them super perfect. And then their bodies can be, you know, little or bigger. Uh, they can be wonkily shaped again, we can do little bird, little body. And then wings you can play with, you can do, you know, simple wings like just like this, as if it's sort of an owl that's gonna sit in there like that. Or you can do more like feathery wings. And again, we're going for asymmetry and wonkiness. You can do some feet. And then um, eye-wise, so in the past my work at Crooked Crooked Bridge, I used to do these kind of funny eyes where they're kind of big, uh, owl-like eyes, and then I would do them non, not aligned, so one higher and one lower, perhaps, something like that, and then I would maybe do like petals around it, or a line around it, something like that, and then uh, beak-wise, you can choose where you want to put your beak. You want to put it low in the face, or do you want to put it high in the face? Wherever you want to go with it, you can try it out. So you can change all your features and positioning. You can do little ears, uh, or you can do little feathery things, anything that you like the look of. And then on the head we can do things like this, you know, like make it like bird-like looking. Eventually I end up with a lot of doodles as well. So I tend to put, like you see, little doodles on there on the tummy and on the face. That's just a addiction I have. <laughs> so, um, and then I also end up putting symbols on the head. So, and, and nowadays I make more human looking eyes. Uh, it's just evolved that way. You don't have to do that. I just like it because I like putting a lot of detail into my eyes. And then I do kind of funny long... Oh, that's why. Yeah, I also oh, you can use... Uh, you, um, um, I'm asking you also to use like a... For the supplies, a, a scrapey tool like this, like a... This is a knitting needle. This would be a bamboo stick or something because I like to draw uh, or I, I like to scrape into the paint and make the eyelashes long. So I make eyes like that, but you could do one eye like that and one eye like that. Just make them as quirky or as not quirky as you want. And then you can do quirky beaks. We can do circular circles around the eyes, little cheek things. And then on here you can do symbols that are meaningful to you. Uh, we can do like big feathers on the head if we want. Now it looks more like a rabbit. That's cool. A bird rabbit. I like it. Uh, or you can do feathers here. I tend to also end up with adding butterfly wings. So they already have bird wings, but I add butterfly wings as well. That's because I live in a magical, strange world <laughs> where only I seem to live. <laughs> and I'm not even on LSD. <laughs> 
Okay, so you get the gist, I think, right? So you get different, you can also give them long legs, and that would be very cool with knees. Long legs with knees. Look at that, how cool that is. And then funny claw-like things. There's a lot of scope for creativity and design, and you are free. You can give them clothes, by the way. So in the past I've given them clothes. So this looks a bit like a waiter, but anyway, you can give them, um, what is this? This is called a bow or, I don't know, a jumper, a little t-shirt, and then trousers. You know, you can do all kinds of funny things with these birds, whatever you want to do. They are there for it. They're happy to be dressed up, to be representing any quirks you want to include. You can give them glasses. You can give them hats or crowns. You can give them dresses. Oh, I like this. Dresses with flowers on. Go as crazy or as not crazy as you want. Like mine, don't really wear clothes at the moment, but you can. This one does have a crown. You can add whatever you want to it. And think about the quirk you may want to celebrate or embrace of yourselves. Okay, I hope that is helpful. And now let's start on our design and our painting process. Okay, let's get started on the design and painting of our quirky bird. Now, because we are pressed for time, I will be time-lapsing this uh, segment. However, I will put uh, subtitles under so that uh, you can see if I have any, uh, if I change supplies. So I hope you enjoy creating your own quirky bird. I can't wait to see what you're doing. Please tag me in the Facebook group so I can see your birdies. And if you love my work, you can find me on www.willowing.org. And also, I love hanging out on Instagram. It's my favorite favorite place to be so please follow me there on at willowing okay let's get started <laughs>
with a very vibrant and jolly good old lovely quirky bird who's um, extra festive for some reason. It looks like confetti on her and I really love her. I like how um, it's so festive and she's very yeah sort of happy and sunshiny for me or just sort of uplifting and I decided at uh, last minute to add a little quote or a little word some words here be you to um, remind people to be yourself, however quirky you may be. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this session with me, Tamara Lepore, today, and I can't wait to see your beautiful quirky birds. Please tag me in the Facebook group, and I really look forward to your beautiful paintings. Thank you so much. 
Bye.